Hey everybody, I'm Jason. Welcome back. Have you heard that it's almost impossible to crush an egg with your bare hands? Today we're going to explore the science behind this and demonstrate exactly how it works. So an eggshell is a very hard structure that protects a very delicate interior. If you take an egg in your hand like this, and uh, don't, don't put a pressure point with your finger, but just wrap around it and squeeze, most people cannot break an egg. If you do it, be careful, do it outside, do it over a trash can so it can make a mess. If you put a pressure point, you know, if you put your thumb here and push with your thumb, you can overcome the strength and break it. But I'm squeezing pretty strong, maybe not all of my strength, but a good chunk of it, and I can't break it. And so if I just put this in my hand, see, I can't really break it too easily here, but if I put this here and, and then, then do it like this and I'm putting a pressure point, I'm putting essentially concentrating a lot of the force on the edges of this dime here. And then when I do that very, very easily, I broke this egg here. Give it a try, but be careful, it's really messy. Take a look at these incredible shots in slow motion. You can see that the eggshell ruptures right at the edge of the coin and the rupture and the cracks kind of spider out from that point. And when you try to crush the egg without that pressure point there, it's very, very difficult to do. And from that crack, the interior just explodes. The same thing happens when we crack an egg. I started shooting these high speed shots of eggs cracking and dropping into the bowl. And when I started looking at the footage, it just absolutely mesmerized me. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave them in here. Basically these shots range from about 1400 frames per second all the way up to maybe 4,000 frames a second, depending on the shot. And it's almost like these eggs when they're falling, it's like they're in a different universe of their own. We see this stuff with our eyes, but when you slow it down, you can just see every little drop, the surface tension, the viscosity. You see details that we just can't see with our senses. And so it's fascinating to me. So I hope you enjoy these. Now for the photography nerds out there, when you shoot really high speed footage like this, it's a specialized camera and the frame rates are so high that you need a ton of light. My normal studio lights is not even close to what you need for this. To get these shots, I have to have three uh, 300 watt LED spotlights essentially. So about 900 watts just in lights and these lights are not omnidirectional. They're spotlights that go directly on. So it, it, it literally would blind you if you looked at these lights with your naked eye. But the shots I think that we get as a final result are amazing. So I got some new lenses. One of these lenses is the probe lens. It's the same lens that lets us go inside of the balloon and inside of the egg. And I just couldn't help but use it here to make some really cool shots of whisking eggs. Of course, we have the slow motion shots as well, and I just couldn't resist shooting those because anytime you see this highly viscous liquid like an egg yolk whisked around, it just looks really fascinating in slow motion. And the reason is because the shape of the egg is this weird ellipsoid, not symmetrical, but it's an ellipsoid. And so as I squeeze, then every part of the shell or most of it is under compression. And this eggshell, when it's being compressed along the direction of the shell is very, very strong. But if you put your, uh, if you bang it against something hard like this, then you'll, or if you push with your thumb with a very high pressure here, then you're pushing in and you're deforming it inward. And you're almost, instead of, um, Instead of compression, you're putting it in tension. You're pulling it apart. That's what tension is. And these things are not very strong in tension. They're very strong in compression though. So if you put your hand around evenly and squeeze, then you usually can't get it to break. But if you put your thumb and squeeze really hard, you know you can. And it serves a very special purpose. It obviously needs to be strong because birds you know, will sit on their eggs and so it has to be strong enough to withstand that. But also it acts as a, as a semi-permeable membrane that allows gas to go in and out, like oxygen to go in and carbon dioxide to come out while keeping the liquid 
liquid held on the inside, the yolk and the white that's on the inside. So it allows gases to transfer back and forth, you know, a, a, a basic form of respiration before the, before the chicken is fully developed or before the bird is fully developed. It's allowing CO2 and oxygen to pass back and forth through microscopic holes in the egg there. And the egg is obviously very strong. It's made mostly of something called calcium carbonate. So some calcium atoms, you think about calcium making your bones strong, right? Carbon, oxygen, so calcium carbonate, right? So what I wanna do is put them in the vacuum chamber. I suspect nothing will happen, but maybe I'm wrong and maybe we'll get some action, we'll see. What I'm gonna do is take half of the eggs, I've got 25 or 26 eggs, I think, and what we're going to do is I'm gonna poke holes with this uh, needle here. I'm gonna poke a hole in the top of about half of the eggs. And then that way, maybe we'll get a geyser or something, maybe not. But I want you to make your own prediction and we'll talk about the difference between how eggs behave and bags and balloons behave after we're done. So let's go ahead and uh, come over here and begin to uh, put some holes in some of these eggs. I'll just kind of go here and uh, just kind of, kind of poke a little hole there. There's one right there. Even with a needle, to be honest with you, it's kind of cool. Even with a needle, it takes a while, especially these big, big brown ones. Now you can get in there, but it's, it's difficult to do and you have to work at it. So I'm gonna do this for half of them and then we're gonna load them up, put them in the vacuum chamber. I thought it would be fun to try to actually cut through the end of an egg with a hacksaw and try to see if we can go inside of the egg with the camera. Now, the first time I actually did this, I made a huge mess and applied too much pressure and the egg actually shattered. Now I learned two lessons from this exercise. First, try to wear gloves in case you get your hands messy again. Second, apply a lighter pressure with longer strokes. And when I was able to do that, I was able to actually cut through the eggshell over a period of about five or 10 minutes and make a nice hole in the end. Notice as the saw goes back and forth, you can see the particles of calcium carbonate kind of flaking off and flying off of the saw blade. After this first test, I was able to go all around the circumference doing this over and over again and actually slice the end off of the eggshell. Now here's the end result. I have absolutely no reason to do this other than I just wanted to see if I could do it. Here's the eggshell with the end sliced off and we send my probe lens all the way through inside of the egg, sort of from the perspective of if you were living inside of this egg. If you look carefully when you get to the very back of the egg, you can kind of see these, these markings and sort of tendrils, almost like blood vessels of some sort of form inside of the eggshell looking from the inside. I don't know exactly what purpose these serves, but obviously it's to support the embryo during development. Now I have more of the eggs on the top that have the holes and that way if we get any geysering or anything like that, um, hopefully we'll see it coming right out of the top there. It looks like I have just the right amount of eggs actually. I have one more and we'll just put that one down here. Hopefully nothing catastrophic happens because they can't really fit it anywhere else. So we'll just put it, we'll put it right over there. Oh, I have two more actually. We'll put that one right over there as well. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one, here we go. All right. So we're at three quarters of an atmosphere, approaching one quarter, one half, sorry, of an atmosphere. There's one half. All right, then we will approach our way to one quarter of an atmosphere. Look, it's, it's already coming out of that one over there. That's really cool, check that out. Okay, there is one quarter of an atmosphere right there. Already making a mess. We're going to let it go as far as we can and see what happens. But nothing major, nothing like nothing like an exploding set of eggs or anything, even though that's pretty cool over at the end. Nothing happened. Why? Uh, or I shouldn't say nothing, you know, amazing happened. Why, why is that? Well, because these eggs are filled with a liquid right? Not a gas. Or if there is a gas in there, it's a very small amount of gas. And we already saw how strong this eggshell is. So that whatever tiny amount of gas was in there was not enough to push on the outside and rupture the egg, except in that one case, which is kind of interesting. All right. Um, even when we had the holes punched in the eggs, all these eggs on the top have holes. We didn't really get any geysering. We saw a little bit of leakage over here, which is now gone when we put the air back in. Why is that? Well, a gas tries to fill its container in all directions. The pressure of a gas, we say, 
exerts against the walls of the container because it's constantly colliding. Like the gas inside of this chamber is constantly colliding with all surfaces. So it's going up, down, sideways, colliding in all directions. That's what we call the internal pressure. So if we remove the outside pressure, then that internal pressure then begins to expand it in all directions, like with the balloons and, and popping the bags. But in an egg, it's a liquid. Now we also talk about liquids having pressure too. And they do have pressure, you know, like going under a swimming pool of water, there's pressure on your ears. That's pressure due to the weight of the water or the liquid as, as we go down in depth. And so we remove the outside air pressure and there is, is not enough of a force pushing from the inside out to do anything dramatic. So a liquid, uh, has its own unique behaviors in a, a vacuum, but exploding eggs, unfortunately, isn't one of them. So what I'd like to do now, just since we have all these eggs, let's go ahead and crack all the eggs in a container, whisk them together, and let's put the eggs in here, and let's just see if it's possible to get these eggs to boil uh, in a vacuum without adding any heat. And let's see if the eggs cook along the way uh, anyway, because as you know, the boiling point of a liquid depends on the pressure. If we remove the pressure, then we might be able to get the eggs to boil. I'm not sure. We're gonna check it out and find out. All right, this is going to either make a huge mess or do absolutely nothing at all. Let's take a look. Uh, eggs, trying to scramble them in a vacuum chamber. Will they boil or not? Three, two, one, here's the vacuum. All right. We're at three quarters of an atmosphere. And now we are at one half of an atmosphere. Okay. Passing half an atmosphere. I see some movement in there. Just, maybe that was just my imagination. I thought I saw some movement at the bottom there. Okay, now we're approaching a quarter of an atmosphere. I see some bubbles coming up. I do, absolutely, it's not my imagination. So we see some bubbles forming. Let's see, by removing the outside air pressure, how messy this gets. I have no idea. Okay, we're past a quarter of an atmosphere. Got some big bubbles in the center. Ooh, looks like, looks like a lot of bubbles are forming. Okay, we're almost to the limit of what this vacuum pump can actually do. Let's just keep pumping. Oh, it looks like the eggs are swelling up. Oh my goodness. I think this might make a big mess. Ooh, it's definitely swelling. So whatever dissolved gases were, were in there are coming out and making bubbles. And this is going to make a mess. Ooh, okay, and right over the top. Yep, we're in a mess territory here. Wow, it looks very foamy, almost like a curtain. Wow, check that out. That is really neat looking, oh my goodness. So why is it boiling? I mean, basically that's what's happening, is, is it's kind of boiling and also dissolved gases are coming out. Why is that happening? Well, because Liquids are easier to boil at a lower outside pressure because it's easier for the molecules to escape and to go off into the, into the outside environment because there's less pressure from the outside. Wow, this thing is like baking a cake. Oh my goodness. You can see the structure of all the bubbles there. So we have some dissolved gases coming out. We have some water that's kind of boiling and making a bubbling kind of sensation here. We have like a caldera or some sort of valley in the center of this thing. I'm going to be scrubbing this thing for days. Okay. All right. And we're going to let the air back in. Three, two, one. What happens there? And it just collapses. And here is that footage sped up so you can see the whole process a little faster. Consistency is the same, more or less. Let's touch it. It's nice and cool. From another video I've done, I've already talked about that, that things get colder when they, when they actually boil. We don't notice it on the stove because we're adding heat from the bottom to get it to boil. And so we kind of think of boiling as something we add heat to and it gets hotter. But the act of boiling itself, the hottest molecules, which are the most agitated, actually escape and they leave the surface. Like boiling water, the steam comes off, leaving behind the cooler bulk liquid behind. So a thermometer in 
uh, uh, boiling water in a vacuum actually goes down because everything left behind is cooler than the hot particles which have escaped. So the reason this thing boils and we've scrambled eggs, so to speak, uh, in a vacuum is because the outside air pressure is lower. So it's easier for whatever water molecules are in here to escape because the outside air pressure is lower. And because of that, we get the boiling process. Of course, it makes all the foam because we have a lot of elasticity in the egg yolk. And so we can, it kind of makes that foamy situation that we saw. I really hope you've enjoyed what we've done here today. I was curious if we take a whole egg and put it in a vacuum chamber, what would happen? Would it explode or not? And what we figured out is that in general, it doesn't really explode, although we did see one of them kind of rupture a little, maybe that was a little bit more weakened. But in general, eggshells are really, really strong, and they have to be because they support life in the most vulnerable state in the beginning there before it hatches from that egg. So it has to be durable, it has to be strong, while allowing CO2 and oxygen to travel across the boundary there. But if we crack eggs and if we uh, put them in there, then we can get that substance to quote unquote boil, even though it's not happening at a high enough temperature to what we call scramble an egg or boil an egg. It looks the same, but the boiling process is happening. So yes, we can scramble eggs in a vacuum chamber, but it doesn't really change the consistency of the egg at all. I hope you've enjoyed what we've done here today. Um, please drop me a line, let me know what you think, and don't forget, always stay curious. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.